audio jungle. The removal of a large copper oak infested with the giant polypore fungus presents a multifaceted challenge that combines tree health expertise, safety measures, and the specialized climbing skills of professional arborists. This process is not only a technical endeavor but also an ecological responsibility, given the crucial roles these trees play in urban parks, gardens, and forests. The removal of this particular oak, standing at 24.7 meters tall with a crown spread of 21 meters, showcases the expertise required in arboriculture and the advanced techniques used to safely dismantle and manage trees affected by severe fungal infections. A majestic beech with a crown width of 21 meters had to be carefully dismantled due to its compromised structural integrity caused by the recent whorling, one of the most feared tree fungi. The recent whorling, a fungal pathogen, weakens trees by invading through root injuries, often caused by urban infrastructure projects, ultimately affecting their stability. As a result, trees infested with this fungus are at a high risk of breaking or toppling, especially during adverse weather conditions, posing a danger to nearby pedestrians, vehicles, and structures. Peter Cohn's team, specialized in tree care, was called in for this delicate task. His crew, comprising trained arborists certified in rope climbing techniques, undertook this felling operation. Their qualifications include credentials as Pachagrawerte, specialized agricultural engineers, in tree care and sanitation, as well as European tree workers certified by FLL standards. These certifications, alongside years of experience, equip them with the skills necessary to navigate challenging felling scenarios, especially in urban areas where precision and minimal impact are paramount. One of the core techniques used in this type of work is sailfooter technique or rope climbing technique, which allows arborists to access and manage trees safely and with minimal damage. Unlike mechanical lift, which can be invasive and may harm the tree's healthy branches, rope climbing enables the arborist to reach the highest and most delicate parts of the crown without damaging the surrounding area. This approach, while appearing risky, is highly controlled and executed by trained professionals who use advanced rope systems to ascend and work within the tree canopy. This method is particularly valuable when working with large, spreading trees, like the beech in this case, as it allows for the systematic removal of branches and sections of the trunk. This approach minimizes the impact on the surrounding environment and is less disruptive than traditional methods. Additionally, using rope climbing techniques can facilitate a more efficient and ecological approach to tree care, as it avoids the heavy machinery that can compact soil and affect nearby vegetation. Tree felling, especially for large trees, is inherently risky and is classified as a hazardous occupation. The presence of the recent falling fungus added further challenges, as it weakened the tree's structure, making it more unpredictable during the felling process. To mitigate these risks, arborists employ specialized techniques, such as rigging, where sections of the tree are lowered individually with ropes to control their descent. Rigging is essential in urban areas where there is limited space and the presence of buildings and passers-by. The team must follow stringent safety measures, including wearing appropriate protective gear like helmets, harnesses, gloves, and chainsaw-resistant clothing. Additionally, safety protocols demand continuous risk assessments throughout the process, allowing the team to adjust their approach as necessary to ensure a safe and controlled felling. Each step of the dismantling is planned meticulously, with arborists working together to anticipate potential hazards and handle any sudden changes in the tree's behavior as it is cut. Trees in cities, parks, and gardens play a vital role in maintaining environmental balance. They act as natural air filters, providing oxygen, reducing dust, offering shade, and enhancing the urban landscape. They also provide habitats for numerous species, contribute to soil stability, and help mitigate urban heat. 
However, urban trees face various stressors that can compromise their health and longevity. Mechanical damage from construction activities, soil compaction, pollution, and improper planting and pruning techniques are common issues that can weaken trees, making them more susceptible to diseases like recent flowing. Given these challenges, professional tree care has become increasingly necessary in urban areas. Tree care specialists, such as the team led by Peter Cohn, aim to harmonize the needs of both the tree and the surrounding human environment. This involves routine inspections, preventive maintenance, and, when necessary, interventions like the felling of weakened trees to ensure public safety. In doing so, tree care professionals help maintain a sustainable balance, preserving the ecological and aesthetic benefits that trees provide while preventing potential hazards. from recognized bodies, ensuring they are equipped with the knowledge and skills necessary for handling trees safely. Among these certifications is the FLL Certified Bomb Controller, Tree Inspector, which requires knowledge of tree biology, pathology, and safety standards. Certified European tree workers, like those on Cone's team, must undergo rigorous training, which includes practical assessments to demonstrate their ability to perform tree care tasks according to European safety and quality standards. Additionally, specific training in rope climbing and rescue techniques is essential, as tree care work often takes place at considerable heights. This training, mandated by organizations such as the Gardenbau Berufsgenesenschaft Castle, ensures that arborists can safely maneuver within the tree and manage any unexpected situations, including self-rescue or assisting a fellow climber if an emergency arises. Tree care, particularly in urban settings, requires a balance between the needs of the tree and the surrounding human environment. This is where skilled arborists come in, bringing expertise in assessing tree health, controlling diseases, and executing necessary procedures. Tree care specialists, like Peter Cohn's team, are certified in various aspects of arboriculture, they include Fachagrarwarte for tree care and restoration, European tree workers, and FLL certified tree inspectors, all accredited by reputable institutions. Cohn and his team also include certified trainers in rope climbing techniques, ensuring that every step taken in this challenging profession is safe, professional, and effective. Since 2003, Peter Cohn has brought his expertise in tree care to Switzerland, where he has applied and refined his skills in tree care for both local and international clients. His training in Germany and Switzerland, as well as his broad experience working in various European cities from Hamburg and Berlin to Bern and beyond, has made him a versatile expert in the field. His commitment to safe, eco-friendly, and respectful tree management shines through in his approach, particularly when using specialized methods like rope-assisted climbing for tree work. Professional tree care goes beyond the physical act of trimming or felling. It involves an ethical responsibility to the environment. Trees are not only valuable for their aesthetic and functional roles in urban areas, but also contribute to biodiversity and ecological health. Therefore, the decision to fell a tree is never taken lightly. Tree felling is inherently hazardous and should not be undertaken by untrained individuals, especially for trees with compromised stability. Trees weakened by giant polypore are particularly unpredictable, as decay may progress rapidly within the trunk or roots, leading to sudden collapses. Statistics from NSW indicate that tree felling accidents result in about 150 injuries annually, underscoring the need for careful planning, professional training, and adherence to safety standards. For large-scale felling projects in residential or commercial settings, tree care specialists use demolition techniques. This method involves dismantling the tree to avoid collateral damage, with each cut and descent carefully controlled. 
Effective tree care relies not only on technical skills but also on a deep understanding of tree biology, local regulations, and advanced climbing methods. Safety certifications, such as those for rope climbing and equipment handling, are essential to prevent accidents. The felling of the recent Horling infected beech tree by Peter Cohn's team exemplifies the intricate balance between environmental stewardship and public safety that defines modern tree care. Utilizing advanced techniques like rope climbing and rigging, the team safely dismantled a potentially hazardous tree in a controlled, responsible manner. Their work underscores the critical role of trained arborists in preserving the health and safety of urban landscapes. Through meticulous planning, specialized skills, and a deep understanding of tree biology and ecology, professional tree care experts contribute to the well-being of our urban environment, ensuring that trees continue to provide their myriad benefits to future generations. In the forests of Europe, grand oaks towering over their surroundings have become rare. These giants, witnesses to centuries of change, are more than just trees. They represent ecological stability, genetic diversity, and economic value. Yet, the decision to cut down such a tree is not taken lightly. When it comes to a massive oak with a breast height diameter, BHD, of 1.3 meters, over 4 feet, and a towering trunk, both the process and reasons behind its felling are complex. Old oaks like this are increasingly scarce. Many have not survived the harsh droughts since 2003, as climate change intensifies conditions that make it difficult for older trees to thrive. Large, mature oaks serve a vital role in ecosystems, supporting biodiversity and providing habitats for countless organisms, from fungi to birds and insects. They also contribute to genetic diversity, essential for maintaining forest resilience and adaptability. Removing one is therefore a loss on multiple fronts, environmental, genetic, and aesthetic. Economically, mature oaks have significant value. Their wood is highly prized for furniture, construction, and specialty woodworking due to its density, durability, and beauty. Yet, even more valuable than its timber is the tree's role as a living reservoir of genetic material. However, when an oak shows signs of advanced decay or has been damaged by storms, the decision to fell it may become necessary to prevent potential hazards. The task at hand in this case involved a particularly large oak. Standing at over 1.3 meters in diameter, this tree required a heavy-duty chainsaw with a 50 centimeters blade, a formidable challenge given the size of the trunk. Felling a tree of this scale necessitates both skill and caution. Not only does the trunk's sheer thickness make the cutting process complex, but the tree's age and condition add further complications. Decay in the core of the tree was evident, a telltale sign that it had reached the end of its lifespan and posed a structural risk. Such a condition made it both a danger to surrounding trees and people if it were to fall unexpectedly. The workers prepared meticulously, knowing they would need to make strategic cuts and monitor how the tree responded. They aimed to control its fall as much as possible, minimizing damage to nearby areas and ensuring a safe operation. Their objective was to avoid a collapse that might create additional hazards in the forest or compromise the surrounding environment.
During the cutting process, it became apparent that this oak had extensive decay in its core, a condition that can make felling more unpredictable. Oaks typically rot from the inside out, so while the outer layers may still appear solid, the heartwood can become hollow or soft. The decay in this tree's core likely began years earlier, spreading from within until it rendered the tree structurally unsound. When the core is compromised, the tree can become brittle, making it more difficult to control during felling. The team initially struggled with this internal decay, as they could not see the extent of the rot until the cutting was underway. This situation required them to adjust their technique, cutting further into the trunk than initially planned. This flexibility is crucial when working with large trees where unseen variables, like hidden rot, can affect the process. Eventually, the oak was successfully felled, a moment that brought both relief and a sense of accomplishment. The tree's fall was controlled, avoiding damage to nearby vegetation and ensuring the safety of the crew. As they examined the fallen trunk, the extent of the internal rot was clear. Darkened patches throughout the core indicated advanced decay, affirming that this mighty oak had indeed reached the end of its life. The team now faced the question of how to handle the timber. Even with internal decay, parts of the tree might still be usable for woodworking or other applications. They considered options for cutting portions of the tree into boards, potentially preserving parts of this ancient oak as furniture or other crafted items. This approach would honor the tree's legacy, ensuring that even in its end, it would contribute value and beauty. Wir drücken nur noch die Platte krumm. Mhm. Harry, deine Stahlplatte, die ist eindeutig zu dünn. Mein Schwert ist auch zu kurz. Und ich bin zu schwach. Komm nochmal. Komm. Felling such a significant tree is more than just a technical process. It's a reminder of the delicate balance between conservation and utilization. Large oaks like this, while rare, are sometimes lost to age, disease, or damage. Every tree felled is an opportunity to reflect on forest management practices and the importance of maintaining old-growth trees wherever possible. As climate change continues to challenge the resilience of forest ecosystems, foresters and ecologists alike must weigh the environmental costs and benefits of removing such trees. The story of this XXL oak is a lesson in humility and respect for nature. It showcases the intricacies involved in forest management, where each decision must consider ecological, economic, and safety factors. Das haben wir nicht vernünftig sägen können und das war auch das Problem. Ja, man sieht hier ganz gut äh, hier diese dunklen Stellen, das ist eigentlich schon wo der Baum anfängt zu faulen, das heißt, dass der schon im Kern faul ist. Das ist bei den Eichen nämlich so, wenn die im Kern faul sind, dann ist das Holz eigentlich Nicht mal Schrott, wenn der Splint hier außen bis hierhin ungefähr faul ist. The process of felling this monumental tree required careful sectional removal. Due to its protected status and historic significance, it was decided that four meters of the oak's trunk would be preserved and transported to the Danish Viking Museum in Roskilde. This decision ensured that a piece of the oak's legacy would live on, contributing to cultural heritage. The rest of the tree had to be methodically cut and removed. 
A tree service group in working with massive, potentially dangerous trees like this oak is a standard operation, albeit one requiring extensive planning. The company often manages trees that are located close to structures, roads, water bodies, or power lines, situations that call for expert handling. For the oak, they used a combination of techniques including sectional felling, where climbers ascend the tree and carefully cut it down piece by piece, and crane-assisted lifts to handle sections that were too unstable for climbing. This meticulous approach, which sometimes includes lowering large branches or trunk sections with ropes, ensured the safety of the crew and the preservation of the site. Both Tracervice Gruppen and Hegner Trapold emphasize safety above all else. Adhering to guidelines from the Norwegian Occupational Safety and Health Administration for tree selling operations. With extensive experience in both tree care and removal, the team is highly trained and fully insured. Frederick Jewel Simon, the founder of Tracervice Gruppen, brings his expertise as a certified forestry and nature technician, with advanced training in rope access and climbing. Frederick has over 20 years in the field, working not only on tree services, but also on projects that require high-altitude climbing techniques through his climbing service company, Plater Service UK. This background ensured the oak removal was in expert hands. In addition to removing the oak safely, the team handled post felling cleanup. After a tree of this size is taken down, it leaves behind a considerable amount of debris, including logs, branches, and leaves. The team's thorough cleanup service included cutting and transporting away these materials, although clients could opt out if they preferred to handle it themselves. This full-service approach relieved the local community of the task, leaving the area clear and tidy after the work was completed. Despite the sad ending of this great oak's life, the work done by Tracervice Gruppen and Hegner Trebolch ensured its removal was handled with respect and expertise. This impressive tree, having stood for countless decades, continues to hold significance as its preserved trunk section finds new life at the Viking Museum, reminding us of the oak's place in history and its lasting contribution to nature and culture, a lightning strike that left it dead and barren. This ancient oak, a protected natural monument, had a trunk diameter of 5 meters, marking it as one of the oldest and most significant trees in its area. After the lightning strike, the oak showed visible signs of its encounter, with damage trailing down its massive trunk and even reaching deep into its roots. This level of impact, likely caused by electricity running through the tree's internal structures, led to its decline, leaving it leafless and marking the end of its long life. When it was finally deemed necessary to remove the tree, the delicate task was undertaken by the experienced team from Tracervice Group in APS, led by Frederick Jewel Simon, in collaboration with Hegner Trebolch, where certified tree climber Thomas Hegner joined the operation. Given the size and condition of the oak, this was not a straightforward project. Frederick and his team were highly skilled, with decades of experience in handling complex tree operations. The team consisted of a lift crew, climbing experts, and ground personnel, each equipped with specialized tools to manage the challenging task. Safety, planning, and precision were top priorities, especially since the oak's structural integrity had been severely compromised. The lightning had struck the oak over a year before it was felled, leaving it with extensive damage, from the canopy to the roots. Lightning often causes this kind of internal devastation in trees, as the electrical current moves through the water-filled tissues inside, creating steam explosions that rupture cell walls and can even burn or scar the wood. In this case, the lightning strike had traveled down to the roots, impacting the tree's vitality without necessarily causing a visible external collapse. While the lower part of the trunk still looked relatively stable, the oak was dead, a hollow shell of its former self. 